Good, good evening. Hi, how are you? you? I'm doing fine without yourself. I'm good. <laughs> Uh, I was having a rough day and hearing your voice actually made it better. So thank you. <laughs> oh, you're you're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, you know what? I I used the time wisely. I actually went live on TikTok for the first time, which I've been wanting mm-hmm. to do. And I promoted, you know, my interview a little bit. I was like, go on Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for promoting it. And and how is TikTok treating you? TikTok has treated me very well. Um, you know, it's funny. I do not TikTok in my personal life, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, in my OnlyFans work life, I do. Mm-hmm. And I joined in May or June. May or June, I joined. And, like, my first few accounts I had, like, deleted. I was getting in trouble. But then I figured it out. And now I have 100,000 followers on TikTok. And it's crazy. It's just crazy mm-hmm. to think about. Oh, yeah, because um, I was talking to another lady. TikTok really does help with sales and traffic. Yes, it does. I have gotten a couple thousand uh, subscribers uh, and, you know, fans and followers across platforms from TikTok. But they recently, you know, put this rule into place where you can't link through to your OnlyFans anymore. So you have Mm -hmm. to be a little bit smarter about how you do it. So. I mean, I just yeah. sat there for probably 40 minutes telling people, go to my Instagram, go to my Twitter. <laughs> but it's still good for, yeah, just like awareness. And I think I've built a good little following for myself there. So oh, lo- that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so how the game treated you so far since you've not been in but so long? How did it treat you? It's treating me pretty well. You know, this has been an interesting ride this past like year or so. Um, I never, you know, expected to be in this industry. Uh, But here I am. Uh, When I started, I definitely saw like a positive response quickly. And Mm -hmm. that kind of gave me the confidence to be like, okay, I should keep doing this. Um, I've got something people want to see. So... (laughs) <laughs> let's keep doing it and recently I would say I've really seen you know just like an increase for me overall and like collaborating with people making more content doing photo shoots um you know making video content and just like all of that so it's all good things happening right now which hopefully mm-hmm. is going to make me more money down the road <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah because I tell people this business money is made over time yeah yeah Yeah, I feel like my first year, listen, my first year, I definitely made what a lot of people would consider a full-time income, but I, Mm -hmm. you know, before doing this, I had a corporate job for a really long time, so I was like, I Mm want to make that corporate money again. (laughs) Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, with that being said, let me do my particulars, and we can get this thing on the road. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Smokers Lounge here on Anchor, the perfect app for anyone who's trying to start their own podcasting career. All you have to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get yourself a profile. You can start podcasting. You record that podcast. You can get it monetized and get it distributed on all the platforms for free. So all you got to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get a profile. I'm your host, Kevin Alba, Summit Champ, a.k.a. The Porn Rap Star. Y'all know what it is. Find my porn links, my music links, and my social media links all with one link. I'm talking about all my links.com backslash porn rap star. We are sponsored by the Facebook and the LS community. I'm talking about lsworld.com. Go there today, get yourself a profile, and continue your journey or start your journey to the life of kink by mingling with people like minded like yourself or going to events that will enable you to indulge in your kinkiness. Also, we're a proud member of the GW District Black Podcast Network. I'm talking about multiple podcasts giving you the black experience. And also, while you're on the site, you can also experience some great shopping from over 500 sellers, black-owned. We're talking about shops. We're talking about sellers. Fashion, beauty, health, books, jewelry. You name it, they got it. And trust me, you're going to want it. So go to shopgwdistrict.com, buy black, support the black business, Build the black economy so we create generational wealth. And every Monday night, 
Monday Night Smoke on K97FM, the radio station for the porn industry. Eight o'clock Central Standard Time, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I will be talking to lovely ladies and gents from the industry as we discuss the business of porn. So every Monday night, Monday Night Smoke, tune in to K97FM at K97FM.com and come catch this smoke. Now, with that being said, I'm going to shut up and let this sexy lady introduce herself. Hi there. I'm Erica Love. Most definitely. So let's go. You was a corporate person. What made you move from corporate to the porn industry? Because I know a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, really switched careers big time. A lot of people definitely really came to the <laughs> business. And I know corporate money is good money. So it that, that means that you, you know, you know what I'm saying? For you to leave the corporate world to come to this world, you must have really saw potential in this. So go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I've, before doing all of this, you know, I did entertainment marketing actually for a decade. Um, oh, nice. So, I, I, so this is my first time being in front of the camera. I've got a lot of experience being behind the camera and working with talent and crews and all of that. And, you know, personally, I had always thought it would be great to make money off my big titties one day. I never knew how to do it. <laughs> You know, it's like, why not? I've got a gift. I should share it with the world. So I always thought about that, but I never knew how to do it like safely, worry about your job, you worry what people think. Um, and then like a lot of people, I got laid off with COVID and, you know, kind of mm -hmm. sitting at home, bored, sitting at home, horny, like, well, what's this OnlyFans? Maybe I should give that a try. And quickly realized, you know, I was good at it. There were fans out there that wanted to see what I was doing. And you know, I was able to pull from a lot of my background, actually, with like social media and like knowing how to shoot stuff at home on an iPhone, pretty much. Um, uh, I knew how to do all that stuff. And then, yeah, now here I am like a year later, still doing this and things mm -hmm. are starting to really pick up for me. Yeah, most definitely. So what so uh, when you first started, how did you? your way into the porn industry who did you talk to who did you connect with it took a while to figure out where to find people like i was in facebook groups for only fans creators then i figured out get over to telegram that's where i'm gonna get a lot of networking with ladies and then mm -hmm. um as soon as you know obviously you got to be on twitter and I had a talent scout reach out to me, uh, Stephen Whitehurst, if you're listening to this podcast, I really credit him with a lot. He mm -hmm. was the one who found me for score. Uh, oh. XL girls. Um, it was like peak COVID in Florida and I live in Texas. So it was peak COVID here in Texas too. So mm -hmm. um, I was able to make a video for them at home and then they put it up on their website. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, okay. fans started to find me and, I started meeting people on Instagram and, you know, started doing other things. And then most recently I went to an event with Girls Gone Wireless. Uh, and now I would say I'm definitely more in the industry than I was before. <laughs> oh, cool. So when you found out, when, when Score hit you up, did you realize how big of a company they were? No, I absolutely had to go and do my research. You know, mm -hmm. it happened so fast. I had been doing this only a couple of weeks. You know, I was just mm -hmm. getting my LA fans up and running. And I was like, first of all, you know, some guy reaches out to you on Twitter sometimes that you're like, who are you? Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was real. And then I was like, wow, this is real. <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> um, and it was definitely, yeah, I mean, they were lovely to work with. I'd love to work with them again sometime now that I'm more open to like flying and traveling for work and shoots and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. it was crazy. I had to look. I was like, oh, these are the big titty people right here. They, these are my people. Yeah. So shoot. So your first scene was what, a solo with them? Yeah, it was a solo scene for them. And then. You know, as I've been, most of my content I've made at home by myself in the past, uh, you know, year or so until I met um, Finn from Booby University. He was in Texas, mm -hmm. so I shot with him and Stella Daniels not too long ago. And then I mm -hmm. did Girls Gone Wireless, and now the floodgates are open, man. Like, 
Yes, because <laughs> because I because with you it's like I see that you uh with your picture, the picture that you take is like you have experience being a model and, and experience working the camera for what I can see. Um, it seemed like you took it, it seemed like to me you took it just like a fish take the water. <laughs> you know. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You know, a lot of it is uh, you know, before this I had never modeled, completely mm-hmm. honest. Uh, but I knew how to, you know be comfortable in cam like on camera on my own just from coaching other people how to do it in the past you know telling people to relax and how to stand and Mm -hmm. you know sometimes the more awkward it feels the better for the photo comes out (laughs) and yeah and and then working with photographers just quickly learned you know from my professional stuff like my good angles what are the sort of you know titty things that people want to see (laughs) Um, mm-hmm. then take it from there. So I appreciate the compliment though. That's really good to hear that I look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, and you do. So when you first work with Finney, um I know the first thing when anybody do when they first do a shoot and discuss boundaries, to do's and don'ts. Mm-hmm. Speak to the importance of that and how that conversation went. Sure. I mean, he is such a professional. He is so patient and so understanding, um, answered all the questions that I had. And, you know, he had a plan. That was the easiest part about it. What he came in with a plan was like, this is what I want to do. You know, ABC, it's going to flow in this order. And then we just did it. And it was awesome because it felt so easy because I knew what I was doing the whole mm-hmm. time. There were no questions. There was no pausing and trying to figure out what we were doing. It just flowed really well. And now that I've worked with him a few times, I feel like we've got like some really good creative energy between us, Um, you know, bouncing ideas around. He's going to be back here, I think, next month. We're going to be shooting together with another model Mm -hmm. in Texas. So, yeah, boundaries are definitely important to talk about. I find that I have Mm -hmm. to really go into detail with women more than men, though. Like, (laughs) right? Like. Like women are open to just about anything. And I did a photo shoot on Tuesday and this model had never done like girl on girl titty kind of stuff before. I was like, oh, you've been mm-hmm. doing this for a couple of years. I just assumed that everybody did that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so she's going to be releasing some photos soon with, of me and her, mm-hmm. um, you know, just like light titty play, nothing crazy, but yeah. you know, you got to talk about that stuff in advance. Cause I didn't know that before I, you know, met with Mm -hmm. her because I got connected with her through another photographer um Mm. it was a great introduction like perfect fit she's got amazing tits um Mm -hmm. but yeah we didn't talk about that until we were actually physically together and then we had to figure it out yeah most definitely so um with the short time you've been in the business um Mm -hmm. from working in front of the camera because I know um everyone had preconceived notions of what a porn sheet entails what was some of the preconceived notions that you had walking in and then after you did it how much of that was dispelled by the shoot i think people think of like big boob porn as you know these women that have like fake basically like fake big tits and blonde hair and look a certain way um Mm -hmm. you know and there is sort of that like classic porn look that a lot of people still like And the reality Mm -hmm. now is that there's so much opportunity for people of all shapes and sizes to get into porn because people love everything. There's somebody out there for everything, right? Mm -hmm. So being kind of like, I mean, I'm not like a, I don't know. Some people think I'm a BBW. Some people don't think I'm a a BBW because I don't have a big ass and I don't have big thighs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I got big titties, I'm plump, but like, I don't have like the ass and the thighs. So like, that was Mm -hmm. actually the thing that made me the most nervous was that I was like, well, I don't really have a big ass. Do you, is that okay? Um, And you know, ultimately what I found is like, if you're into titties, then it doesn't matter. You are there for the big titties and that's all you Mm -hmm. want. And I, and I am happy to deliver that to you. Um, (laughs) I think like, you know, it's also you think about like, oh, is it going to be awkward to shoot in front of like a real crew? Mm -hmm. And that really I didn't really have that experience. Like it was all very comfortable. It was all very um, easy for me to start doing that. You know, the hardest part is like you're 
you're like talking to people ahead of time trying to figure out what you're going to do and like plan these really dirty things with people you've never met <laughs> and true 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 yeah because um a lot of time people don't realize we got to pay attention to um yeah the, the the set is not people don't realize fucking behind closed doors in your personal life is not the same <gasps> as when you're in yep. front of the camera because mm-hmm. you're fucking for the camera. You're not fucking to come. You're not fucking yep. to please your mate. You're fucking for the people that's watching, you know, period. And with you being, with, with, when, what is some of the things that you learned over time, the time you're doing as far as how to work in front of the camera and all that? I think I've always had the camera in mind. Again, the world that I came from, I've always been very camera conscious and Mm -hmm. as soon as I saw what looks good it was easy for me to figure out my angles and also just like certain movements you know if you're on top Mm -hmm. versus if you're you know in like missionary all that sort of thing and what fans seem to really want to see the most I think it's a lot harder for the men honestly you know Mm -hmm. it's uh (laughs) they've got to get in some awkward positions at times to get the shots to want and I think you know the amateurs that are out there that are men that are trying to get into this you know they hit you up they're like oh I want to work with you this and that and I'm like you haven't done enough you don't know what you're doing yet because you're still making at home porn (laughs) (laughs) right yeah and I can I can work with that but I'm like that's gonna that's me on top the entire time you know, mm-hmm. that's me on top putting on a show the entire time. And like, yeah, sometimes I enjoy it. I got to say, the one thing that did surprise me that I was like, oh, I shot with some people. I was like, nope, that was a real orgasm. That was 100% real and genuine. Uh, <laughs> that was <laughs> real sex right there. That wasn't fake. That was kind of a surprise shoot with some people. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think the guys have a much harder time than the women do because, you know, we we do our thing. But I personally, mm-hmm. I thought it was all pretty easy um doing it all on camera in front of people and working with people now that i have a handful of people i've worked with i would absolutely love to work with those folks again almost yeah um one of the things i always hear girls talk about is that they, they always say i don't want to fuck a lot of dudes or i don't want to fuck way with dudes and a lot of times they feel like they don't have a choice in the talent that they are faced to shoot with now that happens yeah. when it comes to paid shoots um but that's not the case we turn the content trade speak to yep. the fact that ladies do have choice on who they want to work with how many dicks they willing to follow uh, that was absolutely my experience at girls gone wireless you know i mm-hmm. showed up and i had chatted with a few people ahead of time with a few ideas you know like i'd love to shoot with you and do this you know i did like a cuckolding video and a breeding video mm-hmm. you know i got tied up by somebody else like you know there were people that were willing to try some new things which was awesome and, but mm-hmm. when i got there i'm like this is a very female-led environment i would say it was a lot of the women mm-hmm. approaching men to shoot specific things they wanted to shoot mm-hmm. and you know everybody was super respectful and polite there was absolutely no pressure to fuck everyone there it's absolutely Mm -hmm. not the experience i had at a content party so i would highly recommend like if you haven't been to a content party and you want to make content with new people find one there's a bunch of different organizations out there to do it now um and Mm -hmm. go to them and you know i learned so many inside industry tricks too um just like etiquette and sort of like oh you take some hairspray and you spray it on you and shine yourself up like yeah <laughs> people don't know about that they don't know about that if you ain't got lotion hairspray always come in handy yeah like you know i learned how to like fake certain things like oh you don't want to go down on a girl okay here you can fake it this way like it was so valuable in that sense to learn all those things because i really haven't shot with a studio yet to learn that kind of stuff so Mm -hmm. i do realize when i do go shoot with the studio like i'm not gonna i probably will not have a say over who i shoot with um Mm -hmm. but that also comes with doing studio work in any mm-hmm. industry you go into you know yeah. it's like it's not just porn it's like any entertainment thing you do uh, you're probably not gonna have say over who you work with a lot of the time and if you're not comfortable with that then do the content parties you can make your own career out of that oh yeah most definitely when dudes <laughs> approach you um because guys always ask how i get the business and all that and they always ask about working with the question I always ask girls is what do a guy have to bring to the table for you to say, 
I'll work with you and how he need to approach you. Before I would even really have the conversation, I want to see your numbers. I want to see how many mm-hmm. Twitter followers you have. I want to see if you have an Instagram. I want to see that you have an OnlyFans link and maybe a many vids. I, I want to mm-hmm. see what you're already doing because I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of people out there that are doing this. But again, they haven't like leveled up to really join it professionally. They're still amateurs at home and maybe they're making some money, but I'm like, we're in a, we're not the same level. So I'm trying to see if you're at least at my level, if not close to being my level. And you really are looking at this as like, you run it like a business, you know? And then the other thing I look for is, you know, I want to see, I want to see your work. I'm going to look you up on Pornhub. I want to see what skills you got. If you got a specialty, if you got a certain kink that you're into. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if that's going to work for my fan base um mm. you know obviously big titties there's a lot of different kinks that come with that a lot of things that people want to see um mm. you know i want to make sure that that's something that you, their fans also want and that they're down to you know do all the things on my list of things to do with titties and videos mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to give the fans what they want you know if they're mm-hmm. a if they're a male you know creator and all they got is like skinny girls that they've slept with. I'm going to ask, why do you want to shoot with me? Like, mm-hmm. what is it? Because that's not my audience. I'm very mindful of what my fans are. Interesting. Want for. Interesting. I'm glad you said that. Let's, let, 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 let's dig into that. Okay. Because I'm always a believer that, because I'd like to give you an example. There was a young lady who paid a male talent, um, a well known male talent, actual legend to do a shoot with her, but he's not one that shoots with BBWs. Um, To me, I think that she made a mistake because one, if he don't shoot with BBWs and he makes a point not to, part of when you're doing collabo is to be introduced to their fan base yep, and to actually take some of their fan base as your own because that, that what happens, with, yeah. whether you like it or not. The likelihood of that happening is slim to none, especially if he works with mostly skinny girls. And it's fat, and in a lot of cases, those male talents don't even retweet when she retweets them, when, when she tweets yep. their scene. So what do you think about that? I, it's, it, it's hard, right? Because it's like, I don't, I wouldn't pay male talent because I think there's so much male talent out there that wants to work with me right now that I wouldn't have to do mm-hmm. that. And I expect somebody to be cross promoting me because I'm absolutely doing that for them. So mm-hmm. if you're hiring talent to shoot with you, I consider it like, you know, you're hiring your photographer, you're hiring your video, you know, you're mm-hmm. hiring your videographer, um, you know, they're, they're paid to do one job and that's mm-hmm. it. So I, if I was going to pay male talent and the recommendation I would give to ladies thinking about this is, don't just pay them to shoot with you. Pay them for like a whole full service package where yeah. you're getting, you know, you're guaranteed some Twitter promotion. You're guaranteed whatever it is, some sort of promotion from them as well. Because if they're, if they have an audience, you want to tap into the audience. You can't just think about it as like, I want to shoot with this guy. You've got to think about mm-hmm. it as like, what else do these people bring to the table? And also, again, it's like, if he's not into like your body type and what you've got going on, like that can come off on camera at times too. I'm yeah. not saying people got to be super into everything they're doing all the time. People are professionals, but you know, mm. if he's not into big girls, then like the content could be better. You know what I mean? Go find mm-hmm. somebody who's going to love all your curves and make you feel sexy on camera. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of times girls pick guys because it's or based off I want to fuck them. They don't necessarily look at the business aspect of it that one like for example she probably picked that male time because it's someone that she dripped the fucking yeah but if she yeah. looked at everything she wouldn't have paid him for the shoot nor necessarily used him because it's not going to benefit her bottom line you know period speak mm-hmm. to people male talents that will benefit your bottom line and fit your brand exactly and that's why when finn reached out to me it was like yeah, Booby University. This makes a lot of sense. Oh, you shoot with a lot of people. <laughs> like, you shoot with a lot of people that I would like to be introduced to. So from a networking perspective as well, 
between him and uh, I don't know if you know Barry loves boobs. He's another boob yeah boob. yeah. Between Finn and Barry, they've really opened up a lot of networking opportunities for me uh, in this sort of like BBW adult industry to meet new people, work with them um, in some capacity. So yeah, like find your people, find the people that love what you do and work with them. And Mm -hmm. there's plenty out there. You just got to look, you just got to ask. Don't be afraid to ask people either. Don't be afraid to like go out there and like, you know, hit somebody up you've never hit up before. And also remember, it's like, if you're willing to pay somebody to shoot with you, like, is there something else you could pay for? Like renting an Airbnb and like, thank you. Like put the money where you're going to get the biggest return. Yeah, because I think that, like, like with chicks, because I always say this, you hear girls, and you'll see it online where girls say, I'm looking for a male time to work with. I'm looking for someone to do content trade. But then they expect the guy to come. They don't provide a camera, nor do they even provide the hosting for it. They're not even willing to cover the room, let alone buy to do a sandwich, you know, period. And I think that <laughs> ladies should, if you're doing content trade, it's content trade. That means you should meet him halfway, whether it's, you help with the room or you help with the equipment in some way, shape, form, or fashion. You do something yeah. other than just bringing your puss and your tits. Yeah. There are very few women, I think, that get to have that role right now. Like, if you're big mm-hmm. time, like, yeah, okay, fine. You can play that game because they want to shoot with you because you got all the fans that they not they need to. But, yeah, I look mm-hmm. at this. A true collaboration, you've got to meet people in the middle. Like, I'm you know working on one right now and it's like okay i found the airbnb everybody's splitting it okay we're gonna Mm -hmm. are we shooting this ourselves how are we doing it um you know and again for my previous life i'm like you always feed the crew always always feed your crew you should show show those men so much appreciation (laughs) (laughs) you know because they're working really hard for you you don't realize it because you're busy doing other things but you know show those people some love I said the, the, the men in our business, we don't get the love that we should, you know, yeah. and in respect we should, even from pay to even respect from other models, you know, period. Because I think one thing that girls will take into account, just like women have PSD in this business, men do too. And I tell everybody, everybody have bad experiences in this business, you know, period. Men, a little bit more so than women for this one reason, because women can come into business, they don't necessarily need a dick. Yeah. Not not a physical body. Men, we have to find a physical body in order for us to make money because yep. we don't make much money off a of dick jacket. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Oh my god. There there are a few guys where I you know, I found them on Instagram or TikTok and I'm like, Oh, you are very attractive. You probably have an OnlyFans, I'm gonna guess. And I go and I follow and I'm like it is so small the amount of them that do that they just they do solo stuff like but Mm -hmm. their audience and so i've like had a few male friends reach out and people i know and you know just on social media be like oh how could i get started as a guy and i'm like you gotta play to all the audiences they're like what do you mean i'm like you're you're just gonna be jerking off in videos you better be able to play to the gay audience and they get so uncomfortable (laughs) yeah because a lot of dudes they 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 don't want to play to the gay audience, even though majority of your fan base is gay. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's, so it's just kind of funny. I'm like, if you're not gonna fuck other people, or your girlfriend doesn't want to do this with you, or whatever, you, whatever it is you're telling me, I'm like, you're not gonna make a lot of money on it. Oh, no, no. So we so we have to go out, go into the business, looking for a partner versus us by ourselves. And trust me, it takes time for us to find it. Like <laughs> like crazy. Because because like I said, especially if you're a newbie, because one, you got to find somebody to even be able to what's where I'm looking for, to be able to even get cachet to even show people that you can work. Yeah. You know, period. So yeah. it's kind of like it is tough. Plus on top I keep it hard on camera. So yes. <laughs> And there's so many things that can, you know, happen. Oh, my God. Don't you know it? Don't you know it? Oh, it's so funny. Well, that's what I always try to, you know, you like you. So I'm single. I, like, do online dating. And I'm really transparent about, like, I do OnlyFans. 
of course everybody's like oh i'll you know i'd be in a video this and the other thing and i'm like no nah. i'm like you don't you don't understand how this works at all mm-hmm. it is not what you think i'm like i gotta see that you can do certain things before i will even try anything on camera with you <laughs> like they just don't they don't seem to get it oh did i lose you oh there you are i was like oh did i it's, it's not easy it's not easy for us to be on camera because one no do you got to Keep it hard. You got to deal with the cameraman. Yeah, uh, because he will be touching you. He will be, he will be moving you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and depending on the type of shoot that you're doing and who you're working, with, a couple more people on that set than you. So it's well, kind of right. like, so it's a lot that you have to necessarily deal with in this business, so that you understand. You know, it, you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. For us to do it because there is difficulties on the set that we had to deal with that the average person don't have to. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality. It's like if you've never been on any kind of set and you assume that it's just going to be you and like some cameramen, you are mistaken. Like there are all sorts of people around doing different things, hair, makeup, producers, people's Mm -hmm. assistants. All sorts of things going on. Mm-hmm. The bright lights. Oh my god. Oh what? yeah. No AC. Yeah, it's just like you don't know until you get there. And like I feel like that's like the moment of truth. It's like when mm-hmm. you show up and you see all that and you can do it and you're like, okay, I actually maybe enjoyed myself a little bit doing it. Then I feel like, mm-hmm. okay, this is the right place for you to be. But if you freeze up or you're terrified or you lose your heart on, then like it's not for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't even realize that. <laughs> it just ain't. Not everybody built for the business. Yeah. Like what I noticed. What I noticed is more people want to get into business now than before. It's like it, it's someone should say it on another podcast. More people want to be in the movie, not watch the movie, which they is not. A good thing. Yeah, which is not always a good thing because when you oversaturate your industry. It hurts the industry. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think that there's a lot of people that want to do it. They think they can, and then they realize how much hard work it is, and they quit. Um, oh, you oh. know, just in like, I, so I like started a coaching group on Facebook for other women who want to help get into, um, you know, this kind of business. I'm like, I started from scratch. I, you know, built everything from the bottom up. And it's not easy to do. And I was like, well, I can help other people. I like helping other women, you know, achieve their goals. And yeah, I feel like people, they do it for like two or three months. And then if they don't figure it out and they're not making, like, they don't start making uh, some serious money. And I don't Mm. mean like 10 grand a month. Everybody does this thing that they're going to make 10 grand a month. I'm like, no, if you make a thousand dollars a month, your first month, you're doing really great. Yeah, actually. (laughs) Yeah, actually. I wish I could have said that my first month. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> it's like so it takes it takes time to build just like anything else and you really got to stick with it and you got to be open i mean fans came to me with some fantasies that i was like i've never done that before okay let <laughs> i'll be your mommy <laughs> sure <laughs> you know <laughs> And, and oh lord doing stuff yeah you know i never thought that i'd do like mommy stuff or step mommy role play and you know mm-hmm. you got to give the fans what they want so. <laughs> oh yeah most definitely so now let's get to the unsexy questions okay shall we you know because like i said this my my podcast this is why i say the dicks go soft and the pussies dry up on these questions <laughs> okay i'm ready i'm ready all right now Everybody loves to talk about the good shit, right? Everybody wants to post, you know, at one point they were posting how much they made with OnlyFans and the percentages, but no one ever wanted to talk about, everyone wants to talk about the ups and not the downs. Yeah. So what I ask ladies, and I'm asking you, speak to the ups and downs money-wise of this business. Sure. To when it's down, what do you do to pick it up? Go ahead. Okay. I, yeah, doing this a little over a year now, I've experienced some ups and downs. I, for the first time, am able to look back to, like, this exact time last year and see how much I made. 
which is nice. You know, those first couple months, I, like I said, like I didn't make thousands of dollars those first few months. I really had to like learn what I was doing and learn how to make good content and how to be comfortable in front of the camera. And it's a hustle. That is the biggest advice I give to people is like, it is a hustle at first. And you mm-hmm. got to be willing to work all sorts of hours and try different things and figure out what works for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that in terms of like how much money you can make, there are some people that can get into this and they are making a lot of money fast, but those people already have like, you know, a whole bunch of Instagram followers or something. Those are like the Instagram mm-hmm. models that are super hot with a million followers mm-hmm. that then open an OnlyFans. Those are the women that are making money, like lots of money immediately off of this. But, you know, my first, it took me about three months to get to the thousand dollar point and then it would double and then it would double. But then, you know, it's not consistent every month, I will say. That's the thing that I would mm-hmm. tell people. Do, don't count on this as you're going to make five grand every month right away or you're going to make 10 grand every month um, because it's not always the case. It fluctuates. And there are certain times of the year where people are busy doing other things. You know, September mm-hmm. across the board is like a crappy month. For businesses <laughs> so yeah. guess what it's yeah. a crappy month for our, like porn as well because people are busy doing other things mm-hmm. um and i don't want people to think that that's not going to happen also it costs money to make content like yes. you're gonna make a thousand dollars but you're gonna spend two hundred dollars because you're gonna mm-hmm. get your nails done you're gonna get your pussy wax you're gonna buy a ring mm-hmm. light you're gonna mm-hmm. do all these things so like you got to think about that too. You know, one of the things I realized doing OnlyFans right away was like women were selling promotions to each other. And I was like, well, yeah. this, is, this is great. Let me find the big titty queen that I want to promote with. And I did, but that's a business expense. It's a marketing expense. So you really have to think of this as an expense, as, as like an, you know, a business expense and run it like that. And the thing that would always mm-hmm. like make me laugh is people who are like, I got to pay taxes on my OnlyFans. Yes, you must absolutely pay taxes on your OnlyFans. Yes, you do. People don't realize it. And then they're like, oh, I actually didn't make that much money because uh, I had all these other expenses. So I yeah. think that's one of the, the hard things. That's like the behind the scenes stuff that people don't really think about. And like, you'll get all excited because you'll find a guy who tips you like five hundred dollars and you're like oh my god this is amazing that guy's mm-hmm. not going to stay with you forever honey that guy's oh, going to no. do that for a month he's going to move on to the next girl most fans i think like everyone has like a core group of fans that are always going to follow them that's a small amount mm-hmm. of people but after a couple months people you know they move on they start spending their money on other titties that's how this works yeah, yeah because i tell females you're going to keep new fans the key is happy return that's the key to this and in a lot of cases a lot of girls don't understand that when it comes to this is that like i mean mm-hmm. or what have you the thing about that is look at how many of them is getting rebuilds versus who are canceling after 30 days and just re-getting the 30 days you know yeah. so them numbers can be kind of deceiving so you know, period. go ahead Absolutely. So the so the highest I've ever gotten was to like 1.5%, which I felt pretty good about, you know, that's, it's pretty good. Um, but you know, then the next month, you can go back down to 3%. Like if you are not keeping yeah. things at that level, it, it definitely drops quickly. And it fluctuates. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, it is just a numbers game. There's so many people with inflated numbers out there. It's not just yes. them. They're like, oh, you want to buy a promo from me? Oh, you got to pay me via OnlyFans tips. So, and it's smart. It's smart of these women yeah. to do that. But like, you got to just know that that's also how this game works. It, it is a mm-hmm. numbers game and, and just be smart about it from that perspective. Yeah, because I've noticed that a lot of times girls do not tell the truth of how they make their money with it. Yep. And what I mean by that is, a lot of girls don't make their money on OnlyFans because of subscription or the yep. paywall. They make their money off referrals and the yep. sub for subs and the promos yep. and stuff. Yep. And which is deceiving to people on the outside looking in because they think that, oh, it's all I got to do is just drop some, some videos and I'll make a killing. But they're not understanding the 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 truth of the matter per se. You feel what I'm saying? That it takes Absolutely. more than that. Why do you think people get 
why why you think that misconception is there? Is it because of the people in the business with with the girls that be sitting here posting how much they made and all that, or it's just people just have preconceived notions that porn is easy money? I think it's a little bit of that. And I also think this sort of like new amateur professional world of pornography. I don't know what you call OnlyFans people. I'm like, you're amateurs, but you're kind of professionals at the same time. Yeah. You know, it's only been around a couple of years. And OnlyFans does no training. They do, they don't help our community at all, really. No, they don't. They, they don't give you any strategy. And you see all these girls that have popped up with coaching programs. And this is how you do it. And everybody's doing it a different way. And the truth is, you got to figure out for yourself what's going to work for you. And so you've got to like kind of try it all. But you have to be resourceful. You've got to, you know, go out there, look things up, do your research, ask a lot of questions, and just try and see what works mm -hmm. for you. Like most of my income right now is, you know, it's, yeah, it's subscriptions, but it's a lot of pay-per-view content. It's a lot of sexting. It's a lot of very specific role play sexting, custom videos. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, every now and then you get a generous fan who does just like you and send you a tip. Um, mm -hmm. I do vo a lot of voice messages too while role playing. Fans really like those, but you got to do a combination of things and like hustle. And the the other mm -hmm. thing is like you can't just do only fans. You've got to be on clip sites. You've got to mm -hmm. be on like a sexting site. You've got to do all these other things because. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to buy their porn on OnlyFans. True that. Which is actually a great segue to that because I think the biggest mistake that girls, because OnlyFans became so popular, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people didn't do their research when they walked in the game because people don't realize different sites get different traffic. And yes. you're missing out on money when you're not on other sites. You know, period. Yep. Like with many vids, many vids, they actually show who is dropping new content. Uh, Chris Purcell does the same thing. Um, you don't get that with these other sites because they don't necessarily have a main page that everybody go to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In actuality, and two people don't realize the importance of previews. Oh yeah, you got to promote. You got to give them. That's actually my biggest complaint in talking to other women who they're you know to hear like, what would you charge for a 22 second clip of you playing with your pussy? And I'm like. I would give that away for free. It's a promo. <laughs> yeah, because it's 20 seconds. Ain't nobody going to buy that shit. Like Not really. If they did, they're going to be mad. <laughs> it, it makes me crazy. I'm like, no, no, no. You should send that for free and then tell them that there's like a five-minute video. And they're like, well, I didn't make a five-minute video. And I'm like, you should always make at least a five-minute video. That's the other advice I give people to be like, don't just make a minute-long video and then expect people to pay $30, $40 for it. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that would disagree with me, but whatever. I, I say you got to give them pictures for free. So, like, my strategy a lot of the time is I tease all day long. I'm sending out pictures and, you know, trying to tell a story most days that then builds up to that mm -hmm. video at night. And that's when I'll send out the pay-per-view video. Or if you're a VIP, you get the video for free. Oh, yeah. Because, it, that, because see, that's one thing that I notice with a lot of these shoots now. They don't do photo shoots. No, you that's know, the period. best way. So you got you to gotta compliment them together. You've got to do a couple of, like, start with, like, the Instagram-friendly photos. Just do a couple and then, you know, take the clothes off and do a couple of risque photos. You don't need a lot, just a little bit to, like, give a hint um, to help promote mm. it. And then, you know, put your clothes back on and take it off in the video. That's how I work. <laughs> yeah, because it, to me, the, how can I put this? The pictures are the advertisement, you know, yeah. whether it's the steel or whether it's you. And two, what girls don't realize, you are a, a model also. So it's good to have modelist pictures because one, especially professional pictures, because one, it might help you get bookings. Two, yep. it makes you look more professional. And three, it makes you stand out more than anything else. Yeah, I have always sort of preached that, you know, of course, I start at home with my phone, but I tried to make it look as good as I possibly can, you know, again, like giving people advice, I'd be like, no one wants to see your dirty laundry in the background. Make your bed. Like, <laughs> like 
Filipino, you're selling a fantasy, a realistic fantasy is the way I describe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think, and I think that's also what's missed because everyone keeps talking about the reality, 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 reality. But at the end of the day, people don't want reality. They want a fantasy. Now, it might be reality based, but it's a fantasy. And I think yep. that where people get it mixed up because it's kind of, if people want reality, motherfuckers wouldn't go see the Marvel. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You know, what yeah. more fantasy than that? You wouldn't you have. Because trust me, there's no Michael Myers in this world. Yeah. He's yeah. All, that's, you know, yeah. there's no Chucky. So it's kind of like, to me, I think that is what's lost in this day and age is the fantasy. Mm -hmm. Because part of... Go ahead. Oh, finish. I can wait. Yeah, because to me, I think that is what's missing the most. And the story. There's no Mm -hmm. stories no more. You know, but go ahead. What you about to say? So I don't... And, you know, the story doesn't have to be anything that elaborate. It's a simple... It's a simple hint. It's a gesture. And... That's all people need to be hooked in. And, you know, again, like coming from the world that I came from, you know, I'm like, you always need to have a storyline and people will always be into that. And every guy has that dirty thing that they fantasize about from like, you know, back to when they were teenagers, whether it was yeah. his friend's mom or it was his teacher or it was the, you know, the the girl next door, whatever it was, everybody's got like a dirty fantasy that mm-hmm. that always is going to resonate with them. And you just got to kind of keep trying them out until you, mm-hmm. you know, see what your fans like. And I will say, too, it's like I'm so fan focused. I, you know, always treat my fans with respect and try mm-hmm. to listen to what it is that they want. Even if it's something outside my boundaries, I'll at least, you know, listen to what they're asking for. And I think Mm -hmm. so many women just have like a, give me my money, give me my money, Mm -hmm. buy the video, whatever it is. And I think if they were more fan focused, they would, you know, it's like catch more bees with honey. Mm -hmm. Like be nice, be respectful, give them what they want, be like a bartender, buy them a drink every now and then, a drink on the house, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Do something for your fans that makes them feel a little appreciated and they're going to stay with you longer. And it just like when I hear about people complaining about fans or, or being disrespectful, unless somebody's straight up disrespectful to you, like, you know, mm-hmm. it just sort of that's not how I approach my business. Um, and I just wanted to stress that because I think you are selling them a fantasy. You are providing a service. You are meeting a need in their life. Like, that's why they're there. That's why they're on OnlyFans. Like, you are you can give them an experience they can't get anywhere else. When you have that mindset, mm-hmm. you're going to make more money. Oh, yeah, most definitely. So when it comes to the numbers, do you pay a, a lot of attention to the numbers when you go into your accounts? You know, saying not just the money, but the actual traffic and stuff like that. How much do you pay attention to that? I do pay attention to it. You know, likes are kind of like a, they're a nice metric. Um, You know, I look at that for other people. You know, if I'm looking at other Mm. models who want to work with me, I want to see how much content they have. I want to see how many videos they have posted, how many pictures they have posted, um, Mm. You know, because I have thousands of photos and and that kind of helps me determine, like, are you how long have you been doing this? Like, are you serious or not? Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, OnlyFans metrics are they're not what I would want them to be because it's it you can't track Mm -hmm. from every source perfectly. Again, like I'm a marketer at heart, so I could go deep on like (laughs) the tracking and everything, but it's not a perfect world. So you got to do the best that you can and trying to figure out you know, what social media platform actually brings the most fans to your page? Or, you know, if you do a promo with another model, like how many, what did you really get? Because it's not just how many fans. It's like, did those guys start like, you know, paying you money as soon as they showed up? Um, I pay more attention to like social media metrics than my only fans metrics, to be honest. Oh, so. yeah. Well, 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 it makes more sense because social media brings it in more so than just only fans because with only fans, you're only getting what you're bringing in. With yeah. other sites, you can actually grab surfers and get money from them. That's something that only fans don't offer. And actually, yeah. a lot of these sites in general, whether it's fans or what have you, some of them sites don't offer that. Yeah. You know, to where you can just make money off of people just having to pop up. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, and I honestly, that's why I was like, I gotta go live on TikTok because people can send you gifts on there. I mean, it's like pennies, but it adds up over time. The bigger audience you have, the more money you're gonna make basically in tips from people. Uh, the other thing that I think, like, uh, when you get into this game, like, you have to take the social media aspect of it seriously because you can get social media sponsors. You can get advertisers that, like, are in this world, too, that will pay you to do stuff for them, too. So there's that whole aspect, too. Um, that's what people miss, too. They're like, I'm going to make money off OnlyFans. It's like, there's a lot of ways you can make. Like, you, you got a podcast. Like, there's ways to make money all over the place in this business if you're, like, savvy about it. Yeah, and which is interesting because it, I think girls, they get comfortable in one way of making money and they don't try their hand at other ways of making money. And I see you a lady, be it with your background, you walked in with that thought process of, okay, let me see how many ways I can generate income with this. Yep. How important you having that background and how much it helped you in this business? I think it definitely gave me an edge. I definitely started with a little bit of an advantage because I understood social media and, you know, the different ways to make money in general, all of this. And like, I knew how to work with talent because that is something and crews, like I knew all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I do think it helped me a little bit because it just helped me, you know, do things faster. Like I didn't have to learn that aspect of it. I had to mm -hmm. learn the only fans business. So mm -hmm. I was able to really get to a place in those first couple months where I was like, okay, I'm making enough money that I want to keep doing this. See, that's, see, it, it's funny because that's like with me, I got in and that would draw me to it because it was like at first, even when I first set my first site, which was Cliff for Sale, it took me a year to get my first check. But as I began to make more money, it made me take it more serious. It made me work harder. As yeah. well as you know, advance, gain equipment, and invest more. And now, with that being said, I see that when I look at your I see sex symbol. Okay? Oh, thank you. And you make it a point for your pictures to look sexy, to look professional, like I said, like a model. Speak to the importance of striving to be a sex symbol in this business, not just somebody that somebody wants to fuck. That is a really interesting question. And thank you for the nice compliment. You're definitely making you, me blush right now. Oh, I don't, I don't mind making you blush. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I always have believed like sexiness is a state of mind. I've always had big tits and I've always been, you know, a little plump. And it took me a long time to like be comfortable with myself and realize that there were plenty of men out there that were into what I had going on and that I didn't need to lose weight or do any of that stuff. So that has always been something, you know, as an adult that's been with me and just made it easier for me to be like, all right, I'm going to put on some lingerie and take off my clothes mm -hmm. and go do this because I'm so comfortable with myself. Um, you know, everyone has a couple of insecurities, but mm -hmm. I definitely bring that to me to like the camera like you know being mm -hmm. like no i've got big titties people want to see them i am fucking sexy as hell you know yes you are and you've got to have <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You, you, you've got to have that like kind of mindset and i tell people like fake it till you make it whatever mm. your sexiest piece of lingerie is put that on when you make your videos in the beginning like do whatever the thing is that's going to make you feel like hot mm. and wanted because it comes across on camera. If you're insecure, then this is not for you at mm -hmm. all. And I think some women, you know, people talk about mental health issues and they talk about, you know, like, I don't know what I, I can't get enough fans or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, like, what are, what is it that you're doing? Is it just that your, your content needs improvement or is it your mindset? Because your mindset, mm -hmm. I can't coach you on. Making content, I can coach you on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you really just have to have that, like, attitude of, you know, I, I am awesome. <laughs> and, yeah. and people want to see my photos. And that there's plenty of people out there that want my body type, you know. So mm -hmm. I definitely, that was one of the things, actually, doing OnlyFans. I never expected it to give me, like, an ego boost. It totally yeah. did. Like it yeah. even it did it totally made me like more confident and being like oh damn I do look good look at me like I feel sexy <laughs> all these guys think I'm sexy you know it's a nice uh, it was a nice bonus I will say to doing mm -hmm. all this so how big is your breast 
I am a 36K. That's nice size right there. I like that. Yeah, they're pretty big. They're pretty yeah, because I was always told that titties make more money than ass, and that is the exact truth, people. Oh, <laughs> I've never heard that. That's great. No, because 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 more dudes will want to see titty than booty. You know what I'm saying? True. I agree. Um, Guys and, that are into big titties, that's all they care. They could care less what the rest of your body is doing. Like, do you have yeah. the titties? Mm-hmm. Because um, because even I know that from back in the day, because a lot of the times when they pick BBW, they pick the BBWs with big titties over ass a lot. Oh, you know, period. Interesting. So, and then, of course, you know, Score Magazine made millions off of showing titties, so I don't need to say no yeah. more. <laughs> you know, period. So, uh, so um, with that, I mean, well, put it this way. When you walked in, did you think that the BBW genre was just popular? Because a lot of girls that I talked to didn't realize how popular BBWs were and how well they do in this business. I knew it was popular and I knew just, again, from social media in general, just yeah. like general media, like I knew, you know, there had obviously been like a body positivity shift and all of that. I didn't mm-hmm. realize there was so much BBW porn I didn't know that XL Girls and Plumper Pass existed. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not know that OnlyFans really offered an opportunity for these, you know, BBW queens to create Mm -hmm. this own space for themselves. Um, Yeah, I was kind of surprised. And now I'm like, I've been introduced either in person or online to so many beautiful women um Mm -hmm. that are bbws and i'm just like god damn girl like i wish i had that ass oh my god (laughs) i'm like i i don't know i'm like maybe one day i'll go get a bbo but like i was you know you don't need it you don't need it you got you got pretty legs you got nice titties and beautiful blue eyes my goodness they just they just they just stand out Thank you. It's always nice when people actually start complimenting my eyes. I'm like, oh, you're not just looking at my tits. That's really sweet. <laughs> so you need to wear a t-shirt talk about some up here. Yeah, it's just so funny. Oh my god. And I know the male talent, they just love it when you be like on your knees looking up at them, giving them head. I know they enjoy that shit. Oh them my eyes. God. I definitely I worked with one Samaj. I don't know if you're familiar with Samaj. Samaj mm-hmm. Media. He, yeah, I know Samaj. Uh, Oh my, he really, when we shot together, it was all about the eyes. He really um, was like, oh no, this is a thing where my fans are going to love this. So it's like, okay, great. I love it too. This is, I, I liked the angles, I will say. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I saw, I saw uh, some of that video. Y'all, y'all really banged it up. That shit was hot. Um, yeah, it was. And I mean, he's so professional too. He made me feel so comfortable. He was so clear with his direction. It like working with him was so easy. Yeah. Now with that, because for what I'm seeing, you work with a lot of professionals. You really don't work with a. Uh, and when I mean by professional, so people can understand, these guys are experienced talent. You mm-hmm. know, period. speak to the importance of working with an experienced talent versus straight up newbie. And why it's better. Because to me, steel sharpens steel. Iron sharpens iron. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And how does working with a professional male talent makes you better as a professional female talent? Go ahead. So I look at it in a couple ways. One is like the physical aspect of it where I'm like, they know their angles. They know what they need to be doing to look good on camera. They know Mm. how to flip me around and do whatever. Um, and you know, they got the moves, which is great because fans want that. Um, mm-hmm. they, they want to see that porn star, you know, fucking their wife or whatever it is. <laughs> like, yeah, they, they do, and it and it's part of the fantasy. Like, you want it to be relatable, but no, you want a guy who's like not just like laying on you, humping you, like, he's got to yeah. be able to have the moves. So, that's one part of it that I really appreciated, and then. Mm-hmm. The other aspect, and this definitely is advice for ladies and the guys out there, men that bring the full package to the table, and I am pun intended there, like, they don't just, like, perform on camera with you. 
they know how to shoot themselves. They've got a GoPro. They know some basic video editing. They mm. are a one-stop shop. And those are the guys that I really love working with now because I'm like, oh, you're going to edit this for us? Great. I don't have to get my editor to do it. Wonderful. Like, (laughs) it's just, it makes the whole experience so easy. And like, Mm. you know, Booby University is a good example. The Smaj is a good example, you know. But, and from working with these guys, again, it's like the networking connections I've made and just Mm. the general advice of, oh, if you want your own website, okay, this is the site that I use. You should go and you use this um you know jay Playhard. he was another person i met that mm-hmm. you know super professional yeah i saw that video yeah like when i threw out there hey you know i'd love to do some very naughty breeding videos he's like my fans love that i'll do that he knew exactly what <laughs> to say he knew like exactly how to coach me as somebody who's mm-hmm. never done that type of scene before mm-hmm. so i i do feel like i have been lucky you know like kind of carving out my own path here the way that I have like I waited to jump into the more serious like porn world because I was doing stuff at home but I think Mm -hmm. I've been really lucky and again like I'm not Mm -hmm. some 18 year old doing this I did this as an adult woman so Mm -hmm. overall I feel really fortunate that I've had a very positive experience so far Mm -hmm. now be it that you're older you was older woman coming into business Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, the more successful porn stars, especially in the BBW world, are women that come into business late in life. Mm-hmm. And part of that is because they lost the shame. Mm, yeah. So. I think that, you know, part of it is you get more comfortable with yourself the older you get. You have no more fucks. Mm-hmm. You're like, I want to have good sex. I don't care. I'm going to just do whatever dirty thing it is. And, you know, the stereotypes about women as they get older, they get hornier. And that is, yeah. I think that's, I think that's absolutely. I love older women. I'm sorry. They did bad sex. Young girls can't do it for me, but go ahead. <laughs> I know. It's like, I am so much dirtier now than I was, you know, like 15 years ago. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. If you had told me I'd be doing this. Oh my goodness. Anyway, but I think that you're more open to stuff you're horny her and mm-hmm. you're just more comfortable with who you are and when it comes to like porn though it's like milf porn is in like the top three categories like yes milf it is porn is such a big thing so like you add that on and it's like bbw milf porn i'm like guys love it they're going nuts for it they cannot get enough of it half of my fans want the milf mommy stepmommy stuff they can't yeah, get yeah because yeah, that's my top selling stuff even though I'm retired, that's still my top selling stuff, the milk. Yeah, they love it. And I get it. I get it. I'm like, well, this is great. I could do this for the next 10 years. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do milk, milk porn yeah. for a while. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's going to go away because I just think it's something people have always liked, you know? Mm-hmm. And people, and with like the milk stuff and the BBW stuff, it's like, people it's a whole reality thing we talked about they're like okay well Mm -hmm. it's realistic that i might fuck this woman i'm not gonna fuck the you know model who's a size four with the Mm -hmm. you know who's like a huge porn star but this this milfy lady like yeah Mm -hmm. this is this is what i'm looking for so oh yeah so are you planning to go to any conventions in the future or have you done conventions yet I have not done conventions yet. I have not been to any of the exoticas. I don't think I'm Mm going to make it this year, unfortunately. Um, Mm -hmm. And I was interested in the AVNs, and then I realized they're not in person. So I might have to wait till next year to do exotica. The timing just didn't work out for me um, Mm -hmm. in trying to get to them this year, unfortunately. Oh, most definitely. I mean, with with exotica... I tell anybody, book your shit ahead of time and book yeah. over. Women not necessarily have to worry about flakes for so much. It's mm-hmm. men that really got to worry about it. But I know with you, once you announce you're going to Exotica, you're going to get booked up fast. <laughs> I know. Well, and I, I love that. It was just like the timing of it between when I was like, because I started doing shoots and it was, it was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like there's one this weekend, and then there's another one, and I'll actually be on the East Coast for like during that one, but I just don't mm-hmm. know if I'll be able to get down there with the holidays and everything. Yeah. But you know, I am though, it's funny though, once you put out there you're traveling somewhere and you want to, you know, shoot, 
Like people mm-hmm. are definitely reaching out. I did that on Twitter a little while ago. So mm-hmm. I think I've got like three things lined up for when I'm in the Northeast, um, mm-hmm. you know, in late November, December, I'm definitely mm-hmm. open to more. Um, but again, it's like, you got to be at the level I need you to be at. If you're, if you're showing me like video from your iPhone, you're not a good fit for me. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I hate that that became a fucking thing. I'm sorry. Maybe because I'm old school. I despise anyone that shoot with their phone. That's just me. Because one, you're making the business seem easy. Yeah. Two, it's not going to look as good as a camera because the lens is not the same size. I don't yeah. give a damn if if that camera shoots 4K. You're not going to get the same angles. You're not going to get the same look that you would with a camera. Yeah. You know, period. Like me, I'll shoot with a 12 megapixel old school Kodak before I shoot with my phone. <laughs> now I get it. The quality difference is definitely there. Even with like a GoPro, I'm like, oh, this is, I like shooting with this. This is pretty good. Yeah. And it, I mean, and that's why if it's just me at home by myself, my iPhone, I know how mm-hmm. to shoot with my iPhone in mm-hmm. a way that's going to look good. But I'm doing like POV stuff. I'm not doing anything crazy. That's mm-hmm. the biggest mistake people make is like, they just don't know how to shoot with their phone properly. Like no, and don't. that and that drives me crazy. I'm like, no, you gotta turn it sideways. <laughs> and don't hold it. Yeah. And don't oh hold it God. unless unless you're doing a POV. You don't oh hold it. God. That is one of those things I definitely have told people too. I'm like, do not let your man hold the phone while he's fucking you from behind. Nobody wants to see that shaky, blurry footage. Hell no. Because because even even with a with an iPhone, you don't have what what is it? Uh, the the shape the the yeah the with a camera yeah yeah it, it it don't stabilize with a camera you can put that setting that it stabilizes you know yeah. period and then you're sitting there and then happy dudes don't even know how to hold the phone at least hold it to eye level so they can see the full tilt of you hitting it you see her body yeah. you see the dick going in the pussy the whole nine yeah. they hold it right there the way you only really seeing the dick going in the pussy and yeah. I'm watching that for ten minutes you're boring me you're boring and like when you're doing this at home too it's like nobody understands lighting it's like you gotta have some good lighting like yes. people just don't it's like and again like because of what i used to do i'm like i knew how to shoot like basic social media stuff on my phone and like it really did help trying to make content at home because i'm like I re- i'm like you know it's it's on my iphone but at least it's not crappy footage on my iphone <laughs> I, I, i'm saying because it i'm like because even if you if all you have is a phone at least be smart and make it seem like you don't have a phone. Yeah. You can tell who shot it with a phone and who didn't. Yeah. And that's sad. Like, I shouldn't be able to tell. You shouldn't be able to tell. And that's why it's like, just go buy yourself a $40 ring light and start playing around with it. <laughs> and don't yeah. touch your phone. I, I swear, man. It is just, it is, it is fucking, <laughs> I swear. This, this age, and I always say that the problem is porn has become normalized to watch, but not normalized to be in. Yeah, you know, we're still working on getting to that point, and it didn't help with OnlyFans because it made it seem like anybody can get in it, anybody can do it, which in turn took away the mystique of the porn star. Mm, Yeah, now fans want to talk to you, they expect that they can talk to you. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a part of it now. That's a big part of it. There are very few people to your point that are going to be able to be that elite porn star where like, you don't have to do all this other stuff. You're just still talent making videos. Yeah. And see, I think that's hurting the game because porn stars are special because nobody could do what we did. Mm. You know, but when you got people like Jimmy Smack, you had these celebrities coming on here. You have the average person, like, the worst thing that happened when Jimmy Smack announced that he made a million. Actually, it wasn't him. It was only fans, but that's the story for another day. Yeah. Awesome. Six minute videos. It made, which in turn is a spit in the face to Rome Major, a spit in the face to my man Finney, a spit in the face to Samaj, who we go for making these 20 minute, 30 minute videos, the editing that we got to do, finding you ladies to work with. This dude is making money off of a fucking blowjob video that was six minutes. He didn't even nut. Yeah. While going through a wash, a going through a car wash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it kind of it's it, it, it's the equivalent of a reality star winning the Oscar. 
Yeah. It you is. Know. I get the frustration. I totally do. And again, it's like people that already have some sort of like celebrity following or social media following and they can go and they can do it. And it's like, that's where so much of the misperception comes from. Where it's like, no, you can't just go on and make a million dollars in a day. It's not really how it works. People Mm -hmm. do that that are already fucking celebrities. (laughs) Yeah. Because um, the thing about it is, I think that's the, like I said, it's so many misconceptions because of OnlyFans. And there was misconceptions before, but they became more heightened. Yeah. But what I have noticed is since the OnlyFans fiasco, more people are now trying to teach the business through doing mm-hmm. space through the podcast and stuff like that. Even though the space kind of cringe me because it's funny that my man from Throat War said this, and he's so true. You got people who shot two fucking scenes and want to start space and speak like they've been doing this for five years that they know the business and they really ain't talking about shit. I find that funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is like. I've seen so much of that too, and it's like I want to help people, but you know what? I've got a lot of good stuff I can share on how to get into this, and like I'd love to make money off of that. I'd love to be a consultant. Like, how mm-hmm. do you plan your content party? I can totally do all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, because I think that the biggest, we're well, not misconception or mistake that I think a lot of people make is that they come in thinking this business is easy, and what ends up happening when reality sets in. That's when the question comes, do I stay in it or what have you? And then, too, also the fact that a lot of these girls that are coming in, they're ashamed of being. And you yeah. can't be shamed doing this business because it's going to hold you back. Your shame is going to keep you from making more money yep, and more opportunities. So that was something when I did start doing this, I really had to have that conversation with myself where I was like, I'm showing my face like people mm-hmm. want to see my face like I'm not going to yeah. try to hide it. And like. I knew that it would help make me more money. And I was like, I just got to get over it. And you know what? I was like, if somebody I know from my personal life sees me out there, then they were looking for porn. So who are they to judge? <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically. And that was because... the girl. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say this, like girls are like, well, do I have to show my face or do I have to show my tits? And it's like, you don't, but like you should. <laughs> like, I mean, because let's be honest. Can you name a mask porn star? I mean, they exist, but I think the masks are weird. I'm not into the mask stuff at all. <laughs> no, nah, because, because to me, it, it's a cheat. Yeah. Because if, if you are willing to do all this on camera, why not show your face? Well, right. And that's why I was like, you know what? I just have to not care what people think. This is what I'm doing. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. afraid to, you know, I mean, if somebody asked, I don't up to it. I had a year into it now, obviously, like I've told some friends and even a couple family members that this is what I've been doing. So, you know, but I do try to keep like, you know, keep my private life private. And I get that. But I'm like, that's something I try to coach people on, too, to be like, this is how you set stuff up. Like, don't use your real email. Don't use your real like, you know, phone number to make accounts. You've got to be smart about what you're doing to like prevent Mm -hmm. people from finding you if that's what you're trying Mm -hmm. to do. But I agree. The ma- I think the mask is very much like a fetish kind of thing. But mm-hmm. I think it's a turnoff. But it's like, if you're not going to show your face, if you got concerns about people seeing you doing this, you probably shouldn't be doing this. And I applaud you for saying that. Because <laughs> a lot that ain't supposed to be doing this motherfucking damn thing. Be doing this shit. Yeah, if you got no, a problem with, with it, then, or if you're going to be all worried about like, you know, the biggest part for me in doing all this has been like, are men going to want to date me? How are mm-hmm. men going to react when I tell them that I do OnlyFans? That's been my biggest challenge in the past year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so are you having a hard time finding finding a date because of it? or? Well, it's been interesting. Like, I am dating someone now, but it, it you know, and he's open to most of this. He's comfortable with me doing mm-hmm. this. He's like, all right, if it's on camera and you're working with professionals and you're at these events, like, that's okay. But if he's like, don't be doing this, like, off camera, just here locally in Austin, like, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I'm so, so he is supportive and really curious, but you know, it took a long time to get there. But I mean, I've definitely come across so many men on dating apps where they're again, like they, they're like, I'll help you shoot. I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Or mm-hmm. they just assume that they can fuck me immediately or pay to fuck me because I do this. And I'm like, actually, no, I don't do that 
part of the business. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I make content and they -hmm. just have a lot of assumptions about what it is. And then a lot of the time they're like, well, I would never marry somebody who does this. I'm like, why the fuck am I wasting my time with you? Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I mean, because to me, I think, which goes back to it's normalized to watch, not normalized to be in, yeah. is that it's a job. It's an actual legal job. You pay taxes on it, mm-hmm. you know, and not every porn star is willing nearly with their sex life. Not every porn star is yeah. willing to fuck off camera. Yeah. Actually, I have a complete rule that talent shouldn't fuck off camera because it fucks up the business, you yeah. know. One, it fucks up your reputation because if male that fucks male times off camera a lot, you're not gonna get booked much. Mm. People don't realize that. Same thing with men. If 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 you're known for a guy that tries to holler at the girls on set the whole fucking time, right? Or try to fuck them, and you come off thirsty, that's gonna fuck up your business because people ain't gonna want to book you because they're afraid you're gonna scare the girls. You know, yeah. period. How important is it that people must understand when you're on set, you must stay professional from beginning to end? It's so important. It is so important. Ask all the questions that you feel like you need to ask in advance. Because yes. once you're in the moment, you're going to forget them. And like, that's not the time to like stop and tell somebody, oh, I don't like it when you pull my hair. Like, no, you should have talked about that in advance. But like, yeah, yeah you, you can't be thirsty. You can't be. Yeah, there is once you go to an event and you start learning, it's pretty clear what people expect from you. And, you know, the other thing, too, it's like when fans are at events, too, like you really need to learn how to engage with your fans in a professional way as well and how you want to run your business Mm -hmm. when it comes to interacting with them. That's something else that I feel like girls just don't quite get or don't know how to, you know, be appropriate and and communicate your boundaries, you know? Just be like, oh, yeah, I'll, like, hug a fan in a photo, but then the fan, you know, wants to touch your ass. It's like, well, you've got Mm -hmm. it. Put on on your big girl pants and own it and tell them what you want and what you don't want. You know, so many people, again, it's like you're not comfortable with yourself, and it's like – You've got to know your boundaries and what you're comfortable with and what you're not. You have to be willing to communicate them. Yeah, because it's very important because one, people don't realize if the video goes wrong or something goes wrong on set, the shoot is blown. Yeah. You know, and all that stuff costs so much money. So if you blow a half day of shooting, like, you're not, yeah, to your point, you're not getting rebooked and they're out like thousands of dollars because they've paid all the And you ain't gonna get paid. And yeah. <laughs> you ain't gonna get paid if that scene don't go through. Yeah, it's so, and it amazes me how many girls, it's like maybe they've done porn and they still like don't fully know how all this stuff works. It's just mm-hmm. kind of, uh, it's really surprising to me. So, or if it comes down to like media waivers or having, st- or getting testing or having stuff signed, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you just got to ask questions and learn it all and know how what people expect of you. But, but yeah, if you act unprofessional or like awkward or uncomfortable or like you're not, you know, I don't say you have to be like happy and perky and super best friends with everybody. But like, don't be a bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not yeah, that's the worst thing but... to be a bitch. That, that, that's worse to be unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a bitch to people that's not going to make his dick hard. Like... <laughs> So. God, no, it's not because shit, that'd be the quickest turn off of any male town that the attitude is like, oh man, yeah, exactly, exactly. You've got to, you know, be a little bit friendly or just be professional, yeah, most definitely. So, I have enjoyed this. I want to bring you back, I want to make you a smoke buddy and bring you back as a co host. Oh, wonderful, that would be super fun. Yeah, and uh, hopefully, I'll have some more <laughs> updates for you in the future of like what's going on with me and what I'll be doing. Well, um, most definitely. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I feel like I learned some stuff here too tonight, and I'd be happy to join you again. No doubt. Tell everybody where they can find you, babe. So, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Erica Love, like at sign the Erica Love. And then on OnlyFans, at OnlyFans.com, the Erica Love. My link tree is in all those places, too. Uh, but that's where you're going to see all of the good stuff. I'm also in many vids and Sex Panther and all those places, too. But OnlyFans mm-hmm. is definitely the main place. Most definitely. So, people, you know how we end this. 
Life is a learned experience. What's the point of experience? You didn't learn anything. Smoke is over. Thank you for coming to the lounge, Miss Love. And can't wait to bring you back. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye.